I really think that electronic music is, is um, to me, it's like kind of the folk music of the 21st century. Everybody's going to be doing it. Uh, you know, when I see something like Dubspot, I think you're so ahead of the curve in um, educating people to being able to use the tools, and they're just going to get more sophisticated and more uh, interesting as time goes on, I think. And now, here it comes. That one and only composition, Honeysuckle Rose, by yours truly, little fatsy watsy walla, and it is. This is like a, was written in the 1930s by Fats Waller, and at our uh, studio at KPLU, we've got a ton of different versions of this tune. So I found uh, a half a dozen versions that were kind of in the same key or similar tempo, and then I just started chopping them up and uh, I assigned them to the controller. We have the Fats Waller. So the first channel is the Fats Waller channel. I've got a few things. Uh, uh, it's mostly the piano pieces, and also this uh, little guy right here. Uh, the guitar part was from a band uh, out of Seattle called Pearl Django, and uh, I was A being uh, doing a crossfading. Right there. And then here comes the horns with Benny Carter. And then um, I've got Thelonious Monk also in there. And his, his piano work is kind of similar to Fats Waller, but it's a little quirkier, like. And also this, uh, the bass line. That's a solo from the Monk uh, piece. And I use that pretty much throughout the whole thing. This drum beat, for Steely Dan fans, it's the opening to uh, a tune called Bodhisattva. The way I, I've been using the, the faders here is the, the one on the left here is a master volume, and the one over here is the cross fader A and B. I use these knobs for volume control for the different channels, and these four I tend to use, this is kind of my main effects, and if I need more effects, I, I can, you know, use them up here too. In the 70s, I kind of uh, left pop and rock and got more into jazz and kind of ambient electronic. I mean, like a Tangerine Dream and uh, Eno and Kraftwerk. And uh, I really liked where that was going. I like synthesizers. I, I love Weather Report and Herbie Hancock. And I thought a lot of the work done then with, with electronic instruments was pretty radical. Around uh, 99, I got my own. Uh, digital audio workstation and I did it basically to do my weekly radio show and produce it at home and I syndicated for a while and but at the same time I was really into hearing you know like DJ Shadow I thought was just really amazing the way he kind of put together just all kinds of samples and uh, and I thought Moby and Fatboy Slim were really clever and really I liked kind of that poppy quality that they had and I think Lich Mob are onto something they perform with it and they, they show their stuff and um, they're cool. I like them. So um, I've kind of stayed with it in my own way and at the same time I'm my vintage appreciation. I really love old school like um, 1940s and 1950s music of all sorts. R&B and jazz and early rock and roll. That's kind of, I, I love listening to that stuff and 
That's kind of my, my fetish a little bit. My, my, you know, my vintage fetish. I got into radio, and uh, I've worked in Santa Fe, New Mexico, San Francisco, uh, Seattle, Atlanta, Phoenix, and now I'm working at uh, KPLU in Seattle. It's an NPR station. We play 100 hours of jazz and blues every week, and I pretty much program all the music for it. I started working with Ableton in like 2006. I used it uh, for radio purposes and also for just playing around and doing mashups and remixing and stuff like that. And um, I wasn't working as much with it for a few years. And then it's, it was really odd. One time I came across this video from uh, Matt Mulder. The video is him sitting in his apartment and mixing all kinds of different music on this sort of homemade controller using Ableton Live. And I just like my eyes just like, I go, whoa. That, that was really amazing. I hadn't seen anybody kind of actually uh, remix and mash up music uh, kind of as a performance and that kind of got me going and thinking about uh, buying a MIDI controller and kind of playing around with it and it got to the point where I wanted to design my own and particularly when I saw uh, a kit available through Livid Instruments. Just after I started in the design phase uh, uh, Ian Golden from uh, DJ Tech Tools was up in Seattle and he did a workshop at the Decibel Festival, which is the electronic music festival in Seattle. And the one thing that he said that really struck to me, he says, you know, spend as much time as you can in the design phase and really just work it through and visualize it through because once you start doing it, it's hard to go back. I visualized having it on my lap like this and how my hands would would fit and where they would go. And you know, I was driving my wife crazy because I'd be sitting in front of the monitor for like, hours. And she'd go, what are you doing? What are you looking at? And I'm just saying, I'm just designing this thing. Just trust me here. And then my wife knew this guy in town who was this, uh, um, he had a woodworking shop. And I sat down with him for a few hours. And I kind of showed him the CAD drawing, showed him how I wanted to do it, uh, how I wanted it to feel. And, and after a while, he, he got it. And he suggested, uh, he suggested the maple burl. So uh, this is what he came up with. And when he was done, he was just like, wow. I was like stunned. I was going, that's fantastic. And then after that, I started assembling it. I assembled all the uh, pots first and the sliders. And then at the end, the matrix on these buttons was uh, several hundred soldering points. I don't really, there was no really logical reason for me to do this. It just, for some reason, I was kind of compelled to do it. And I'm not an expert in electronics, and I really never have built anything like this before. So I was really happy that I finished it, and it worked. <laughs> think that as long as you're willing to uh, kind of be patient and taking it one step at a time and not rush yourself or get too frustrated, I think you can, uh, you can accomplish whatever you want. But for me, I just kind of had this feeling of, of just trying to incorporate MIDI controller with uh, sitting around uh, at a party or in a small group in a, in a cafe or something like that and just playing, you know, playing stuff. Not having to be loud, not having to, you know, just be boom, boom. Not like an electronic dance thing, but just more like more uh, 
kind of homegrown and that kind of thing. I saw his the video you guys did of his the, the dub, which was un, I thought was incredible, and I was really wanting to know uh, about how he set up his effects and how he kind of worked that because I'm kind of new to that. Hey, this is DJ Kiva at Dove Spot, New York. I'm here with Nick Francis out here from Seattle. Controller is extraordinaire. It's beautiful to be here. Love Dove Spot. Just about to show him uh, where it all began. Dubspot NYC. Welcome to Dubspot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, Dubspot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you come to the right place. Come explore Dove Spot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.